Hello again, my friends, and welcome back to another demonstration of Bomb Squad Academy. Last time we went through the tribulations of timers and detonators, and now we're moving on to feedback loops. This is not a new component per se, but a new arrangement of components. Let's take a closer look. Something new that is not a component. This arrangement of gates right here is very special. If you look at this section here, you'll notice that it forms a loop. This causes the circuit to be able to remember its state. Go ahead and flick the top push button. See how the buzzer is staying on? Now try the bottom push button. We just added memory to the circuit. Click here when you're ready to continue. Alright, so we have a feedback loop here that is supplying current to this AND gate, which means that when this timer runs out, the AND gate will be satisfied and the detonator will trigger. So ideally what we need is for this AND leg to lose power, which means we need to send a signal to turn off this feedback loop. Now to do that, we need current not flowing through this AND gate. And when we do that, the loop will circle around and stop current flowing through, which will fully turn this off. So we need current not to come out of this exclusive OR, which means we need power to go through this leg. So we turn the switch on. Of course, now the timer is speeding up, but we're going to push this button. So now, when the timer runs out, the signal will get as far as this AND gate and no further. So let's hit I'm done here. Sure enough, we defused the bomb, great job. All right, let's keep going. Okay, and the hint says use the loop. All right. So we have an OR gate here. We need to make sure that nothing gets through here. So as a minimum, we need current flowing through here and not here. Otherwise, if we power anything through here, kaboom. But what we need to do is we need to cut power to the timer. We can't stop clock pulses from coming in, so to stop power to the timer, we need current flowing through this leg of the exclusive OR. So let's trace it back. We have another feedback loop here, so we need power to go through here, because that way we'll get uh, a feedback loop like so. So let me push this button, and sure enough, that sent power all the way through into this exclusive OR, which stopped power to the timer. All right. Okay, let's keep going. Now that we're comfortable with loops, here's an interesting use of it. All right, now this one has a disarm. We can't cut power to it. We have a detonation path that we have to watch out for. Now, if we look here, we have a wire going to the uh, detonator. We could cut this, like so. But there are two timers. We have this timer here. So what I just did kept this timer from detonating the bomb inside of two minutes, but we still have this timer ticking down, so we still need to disarm this. So let's trace it back. We have an AND gate that needs to be satisfied. We have an OR gate. Okay. We need power through this leg by this push button, but we can also power this leg of the AND gate by satisfying this OR, and we can make use of this feedback loop to do it. We just have to direct the current the right way. So let's divert the power through here 
and then through here. That will enable us to go through the loop and back again. So we'll go through here, through here, and then through here and here. So let's do this. Okay, there's something else we need to do. We need this exclusive order to pass current, so we need to turn this switch off. Now let's try it. Okay, so we have power continuously flowing through here. Now we have to concentrate on satisfying this other input to the AND, and we can do that by turning this switch here, and then pushing this button. And we did it! We just saved everyone, again! Alright, I'm happy. Are you happy? I hope so. Alright, let's keep going. Here's your next board. Alright. We have a timer, and we have an instant detonator here that will trigger if we're not careful. We can't satisfy this ant. Now, we could cut this wire. But there's a feedback loop here we have to watch out for. Let's cut this wire. Now if we push this button... If we push this button... We're only getting this far, we don't have to worry about that. But we still need a disarm here. Which means that we need... All right, let's cut this wire here. All right. That half satisfied this AND gate, and so we should be able to finish it off by pushing this button. All right. All right, that took a little thinking, but we were able to do it. That's great. Let's keep going. You know what's better than one loop? Well, it looks like two loops. And we have a slider switch and a capacitor. All right. We can't trigger the detonator, which means we can't have the switch on position two here. But we do need to make use of this feedback loop like so, because if we can get this feedback loop right, we can run a signal to the disarm B and keep it on with the feedback loop. And to do that, we need to put power through here like so. Now let's wait for the capacitor to discharge. Now this this uh, path is dead again, so we can just click here. Now let's concentrate on A. What can we do about A? A has another feedback loop running through it. So if I push this button, we should be able to get a feedback loop going and disarm the A. Let's do it. And we did it. All right. Awesome. Solve this circuit. All right, we have a detonate we have a detonator here and we have an A and B disarm. Now the problem is if I traverse the switches the wrong way, I'll run through this OR gate and set off the detonator prematurely. But we still need power going through this feedback loop here in order to power the B disarm. So let's do that first. So let me put the switch here. Now notice the feedback loop is active, which means that B is constantly powered. Now I can adjust the timing of the current flow by cutting this wire here. Watch what happens. So now I'm just going between here and here. So if I do this right, if I position, if I turn the switch at the right moment, like so, boom. Or actually, no boom, because we didn't detonate the bomb and we disarmed it. Awesome. All right. Let's keep going. Okay, this one's a little tricky. We don't want to 
detonate the bomb and we still need to disarm it. Now if we take a look here, we have this yellow wire connected to this loop. If we can stop power to all of this, then we can eliminate this AND gate from being satisfied under any circumstance, which means that the bomb won't detonate prematurely, so I'm going to do that now. Okay, good. Now, if I turn this switch off, these two exclusive ores will pass current here and here, at least to these two AND gates, but the AND gates won't be fully satisfied. Watch this. Okay. Now, no matter what happens, nothing is going to get through this AND gate or this AND gate, which means the bomb won't detonate prematurely. Now, if I turn this other switch, current will flow to this input on the exclusive ore, which means power won't go through it, which means this AND gate will no longer be satisfied. This means that this input to the exclusive ore will stop getting power which means the exclusive ore will pass this current through this AND gate, the AND gate will be fully satisfied, and disarm the bomb. So let's do this now. Excellent. All right, well done. So this concludes our chapter on feedback loops. Thank you very much for watching, and join me for my next episode on Bomb Squad Academy.